Coming up this week, Extreme E makes history, Tesla has a record-breaking Q1, Chevy announces they're going to make an electric Silverado pickup truck, and more. Hello friends and welcome to episode 59 of the EV Resource Podcast. I'm Zach Hurst and each week I bring you the latest EV news, information, and answers to your questions about electric vehicles. Before we get started with the news this week, don't forget to subscribe to the EV Resource YouTube channel and hit the bell so that you'll get notified of all our latest videos. Starting us off this week, I'm going to catch up on all the Extreme E! news from last weekend. Johan Christofferson and Molly Taylor, the duo from Rossberg X Racing, carved out a new piece of motorsport history last weekend, dominating the first ever Extreme E! off-road electric vehicle race. The appropriately dubbed Desert X Prix took place in Al Ula, Saudi Arabia, between large rocks and tall sand dunes. The historic weekend was not smooth sailing for everybody as three teams were involved in significant wrecks. Drivers Claudia Hertgen from ABT Cupra and Kyle Leduc from Chip Ganassi Racing had wrecks resulting in massive damage to the vehicles twice each, once on their own and then once in a collision with each other. Veloce Racing driver Stefan Sarazan rolled his vehicle during the first qualifying session as well and luckily all drivers survived the incidents without serious injury. Excitement has been building in the weeks leading up to last weekend's Desert x Prix, and the event was an overwhelming success. Following the qualifying time trials, drivers went wheel-to-wheel -wheel for the first time in three races, which resulted in some of the best off-road images ever seen in motorsport. Extreme E founder and CEO Alejandro Agag was very pleased with the result, saying, quote, We've worked so hard for this for many years, and finally everything has come together this weekend. It has really been beyond my wildest expectations. If I had written a script for the perfect weekend, I could not have come up with anything better than what we have witnessed these past two days. I've never seen such extreme racing in my life, end quote. At the end of the race weekend, nothing stood in the way of Christofferson and Taylor from claiming victory, not even a 60 second penalty for exceeding the speed limit in the driver's switch zone during qualifying or poor grid positions in both the semifinal and final races. Their talent and skills controlling the Odyssey 21 vehicle were on display on the most extreme and challenging course. Before the qualifying session started, teams were given time on the track as a shakedown to learn the important parts of the course. And this is when Chip Ganassi racing driver Kyle LaDuck went slightly off course and broke the right side of the car. In a testament to the team, however, the vehicle was repaired and ready for qualifying the next day, Ultimately, however, power steering problems prevented the All-American team from qualifying well and earning a spot in the semifinal races. The first qualifying session was also when Claudio Hertgen rolled her vehicle multiple times. Take a look at this clip of that incident. She is now approaching the end of the lap, so this is going to be close. All to play for. Oh, sideways and a roll! Massive off! That's huge! Claudio Hertgen has had a huge crash! Once again, she walked away from that and was actually okay for the race the very next day. The first semifinal race consisted of top qualifiers from Team X44 drivers Sebastian Loeb and Cristina Gutierrez and Axiona Sainz XE team Carlos Sainz and Leia Sands and Rosberg X racing drivers Christofferson and Taylor. When the green light signaled the start of the race, the three launched forward, leaving a cloud of sand and dirt in their wake. While it looked like Christofferson had an initial lead on the far left of the other two, it would end up being Sainz in the lead coming up to the first gate with Christofferson drifting wide to the left. However, as Loeb and Sainz battled each other on the right-hand side of the course, Christofferson took advantage and undercut both of them to take the lead just after the gate. A cloud of sand in his wake, he was able to easily amass a significant lead as the two following drivers found themselves driving blindly in chase. The race was all but determined at this early point. The Rosberg X racing driver pulled into the driver switch zone a full 12 seconds ahead of Loeb and Sainz trailing far behind. All three teams switched drivers with Taylor and Gutierrez maintaining their positions, securing their team's places in the final race. Unable to make up the large gap she inherited from her teammate, Sands crossed the line effectively ending the weekend for the Axiona Science XE team. 
the second semifinal race called the Crazy Race because only the winner would proceed to the final saw competition between Andretti United's Timmy Hansen and Katie Munnings, Hispano Suiza Excite Energy Team's Oliver Bennett and Christine Giampaoli Zonka, and JBXE's Jensen Button and Michaela Ahlin Kotolinski. As if blasting off with rocket power, Hansen used his rallycross experience to easily pull ahead of Bennett and Button. After the first gate, much like the first semifinal race, a cloud of dust prevented the pair from gaining any ground on the leader. With the driver switch to Munnings, Team Andretti United already had a commanding 30-second lead. The race ended with Hansen and Munnings securing their spot in the final race. The start of the final race once again saw Hansen taking a significant lead over his competitors, leaving them in his literal dust. However, approaching the first gate, Christofferson employed the same tactic he used in his semifinal race to undercut Hansen and pull into the lead. Once again, due to the second and third position drivers not being able to see, the race was all but settled at this point. Christofferson handed the car over to teammate Taylor with a 30-second advantage, and in the end, it would be Taylor smiling ear to ear as she crossed the finish line first, making history as a member of the first team to ever win an Extreme E race. The final results showed Rosberg X Racing completing two laps, Andretti United 23.73 seconds behind, and X44 in third place with 1 minute and 38.09 seconds behind the leaders. Championship points were awarded during qualifying and all races. The standings are as follows. Rosberg X Racing with 35 points, X44 with 30 points, Andretti United 28 points, Axiona Science XE Team 26 points, Hispano Suiza Excite Energy Team 20 points, JBXE 17, ABT Cupra XE 13, Segi TV Chip Ganassi Racing 12 points, and Veloce Racing 8 points. The next race weekend will take place in La Croze, Dakar, Senegal on May 29th and 30th. For more information, you can go to extreme-e.com. Next, Tesla had yet another record-breaking quarter to start the year. 180,338 vehicles produced and 184,800 delivered. That represents a new all-time quarterly record for the company and a 110% year-over-year increase and a beat over most of the analysts' forecasts, which they were running around 177,000. And they did all of this without producing any Model S or Model X vehicles, only Model Y and Model 3. And likely having a big part in it was Model Y production in China. Record numbers like this really do show how significant demand is for the Model 3 and the Model Y. And if they can keep it up in Q2 by simply maintaining the March Model Y production capacity through the full quarter and then adding on Model S and X production, we should easily see deliveries and production over 200,000 vehicles in Q2 with that alone. And speculation is that they might have a shot at producing a million vehicles this year, although admittedly that is a long shot at this point, but I wouldn't bet against them. GM has been busy in the news this week. First, we'll talk about the inevitable announcement of the all-electric Silverado pickup truck. As with Tesla, Rivian, Ford, Lordstown, Atlas, Canoe, and others, many others, entering the electric pickup truck market in the coming years, GM needed to do something to show they were serious about competing in the new electrified marketplace. Well, on Tuesday, they announced that the Chevy Silverado full-size pickup truck will be built in an all-electric version at its Factory Zero Michigan plant. In the absence of other details, the automaker did reveal that the new model will offer more than 400 miles of EPA range. The electric Silverado will join the Hummer EV, the recently revealed Hummer EV SUV, and the Cruise Origin electric people mover. GM isn't yet confirming timing, the model year of the vehicle, or its specs yet outside of the driving range. And on to that Hummer SUV, Duncan Aldred, Global Vice President of Buick and GMC, announced the launch of the new Hummer EV SUV. 
He said, quote, The GMC Hummer EVs were envisioned to be the most capable and compelling electric super trucks ever. The new Hummer EV SUV is the next chapter, which will offer many options for customers to tailor the truck to their lifestyles while continuing to encourage them to forge new paths with zero emissions, end quote. The specifications of the SUV are largely like that of the Hummer pickup, but the big difference is the timeline. With many of the electric pickup trucks coming to market over the next few years, GM is focusing on that, and the Hummer SUV first edition version is not expected for another two years in early 2023. If you want to wait for the base $80,000 version, it isn't coming for another three years in spring of 2024. Next, you've likely heard that EVs from Tesla and Porsche and Ford have all made notable cross-country trips, and now we can add Volkswagen to that list. Volkswagen of America has driven the ID4 electric SUV across the country on a 6,700-mile journey, having started in New York City in mid-March and ended in Sacramento, California on schedule 18 days later. I would bet that it's worth noting it doesn't take 18 days to actually cross the country. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what they were doing, but some of the stops they made in the mostly southern route included Philadelphia, Washington, D.C., Chicago, Atlanta, Orlando, New Orleans, Dallas, El Paso, Tucson, Phoenix, Los Angeles, and San Francisco. The Drive team created a daily vlog series that can be seen on the Volkswagen USA News YouTube channel. The ID4 used 32 Electrify America charging stations during the cross-country trip. Currently, there are two cross-country EA routes, one from Washington, D.C. to Los Angeles and one from Jacksonville to San Diego. Both are mostly southern routes because there is a big gap in the upper Midwest area. The Dakotas, Wyoming, and most of Montana and Minnesota lack EA chargers. And it's possible that Electrify America is focusing on the more popular travel routes first and could get to the less travel routes next. The press release states that EA plans to increase its number of stations to 800 and the amount of DC fast chargers to 3,500 by December of this year. With more EVs hitting the market, the EA network will continue to grow over the next several years and hopefully fill those gaps so that everyone can enjoy long road trips in EVs. But most importantly, I appreciate having more and more EVs doing these long distance road trips to show two things. One, it's possible. You can actually go on a long road trip with an EV. And secondly, it's possible in a non-Tesla. The charging network with EA, Electrify America, and EVgo and others is there and it is working for those who want to travel across the country. Next, Nissan recently announced its long-term commitment to the ABB FIA Formula E World Championship racing through to the end of Season 12 of the All-Electric Racing Series. The Gen 3 era of the championship begins in Season 9, which would start next year, and will feature even more powerful and faster cars. And speaking of Formula E, for rounds three and four, they raced in Rome this weekend in a double header with races on both Saturday and earlier today on Sunday. Both races provided tons of excitement on the track, which if you're not familiar with the Rome location, there is no room for error as the walls on either side are very close in on the drivers. So even the smallest mistake can result in a big wreck. Ultimately, round three was won by Jean-Éric Verne under caution, and round four won by Stoffel van Dorn after a one-lap shootout that was packed full of excitement. Let's go ahead and watch highlights from that exciting last lap. Mortara! Oh, he's big out of shape! And he's managed to save it! Save the season for Edo Mortara, not save the season here! De Vries, Bird and Roland wiped out! Watch on the left. Oof. Oh. Yeah, and he's already been hit. That is a bird sandwich. <laughs> and Stoffel van Dorn wins the Romy Pre. Ah! Redemption. So that's all for the EV news at large this week. I do have a personal EV news story uh, to share with you. Uh, my wife's 2011 GTI has finally given up, as it were. It requires 
a decent amount of repairs, uh, blew out the rear main seal because the PCV valve was clogged. And we've been planning uh, for like two years now to replace that car with a Tesla Model 3. We changed our minds. I think I've mentioned it before on the podcast. We changed our minds and decided we were going to go to the standard range Model Y. And then that was actually gone before we had a chance to do anything with it. But now after this most recent occurrence, we've decided finally it is time. So we have gone ahead and ordered a black standard range Model 3, uh, black interior, regular aero wheels, not the sport wheels. We didn't get full self-driving. You know, basically, with the exception of the black paint, it is the base model car. Uh, so this is going to really help our family. Uh, we won't be paying for repairs for the GTI anymore. We won't be paying premium fuel for the GTI anymore. And the amount of driving that she does because of her job, this is really going to make a big difference. But really big, big thing is now we are a two EV family. The Model 3 will join my Spark EV and we are giving up gasoline forever. So yeah, it's really exciting. I am thrilled about this. We ordered it. We got to wait eight to 12 weeks uh, before it will be delivered. So uh, of course, when that all occurs, I will give you an update. Uh, I will not be able to contain myself, I'm sure. I did have a bunch of people already saying th uh, congratulations on Twitter and Facebook because I, of course, had to post it there. So thank you very much to everybody who's been excited about this order just as much, I think, as I am. So uh, that is the personal bit of news this week. So let's move on to our weekly Q&A. Uh, the weekly Q&A is brought to you by Charged Future EV Consultancy. If you know somebody who's interested in buying an EV or getting charging installed at a business or a, uh, apartment complex, reach out to Daria and he'll help determine the best path forward. Mention that you heard about Charged Future here on this podcast for a 10% discount for any build services. The initial consultation is free, however, so head over to chargedfuture.com to get started. So if you guys haven't noticed, I have been focusing a lot more on EV motorsport recently. So last week's Q&A question was, if there was an electric vehicle event similar to Formula E, Extreme E, or something even like Fully Charged Live, on the west coast of the United States in the coming years, would you attend? And I only had two answers, so a little disappointed about the feedback from that. Uh, encourage all of you to submit an answer. But from the answers I received, it seems that those who are on the east coast aren't interested in traveling. So maybe we should push for an event on the east coast as well. The question I have for you this week should be an easy one, and that is, what car do you own and what is your favorite thing about that car? So submit your answers via email to hello at ev-resource.com or respond on the social media posts, and I will read them out on next week's podcast. So that is your show for this week. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Please share this with your friends and anyone that you know who is interested in electric vehicles. I do want to give thanks to our Patreon executive producers. They are Rajiv Narayan and Greg Fuller. James Hart supports us on Patreon at the producer level. If you would like to support the EV Resource podcast, you can check us out there at patreon.com slash EV Resource. I always invite your feedback via email at hello at ev-resource.com. Please go ahead and leave a comment and like and subscribe on the YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you'll get all the future shows delivered to you automatically. If you do want to listen to any of the previous shows, you can find them on our webpage under the podcast section and on many of the major podcast platforms. Thank you so much for being with me and I'll catch you next week.